presentation on strengthening communities through sharing ancestral knowledge. Um, and our speakers are Jeremiah, Jeremiah Moses Jr. and Cedar Fernandez. Um, Jeremiah Moses Jr. graduated from high school in 2020. He's proud to be a descendant of the Menominee Nation as well as the Oneida and Stockbridge Monsee Nations. He's currently pursuing an associate degree in liberal studies at CMN and intends to transfer for his four year degree. One of his goals after college is to become fluent in the Menominee language. Um, and Cedar Fernandez is a member of the Menominee Indian tribe of Wisconsin and is also of Mexican European descent. She is currently the cultural professional development intern um, international at the College of Menominee Nation Sustainable Development Institute. Throughout high school, they were part of the. I, I don't want to try to say this, I know you say it wrong. Does, do you, does anyone, Cedar, are you in the crowd? Sorry, can you just pronounce that for me? The, the Community Rebuilders Youth Cohort can get better with you. Sorry. No, it's okay. I'm nervous too. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I'll just finish reading first. This is getting you prepared for the presentation. Throughout high school, uh, I was a part of the Mount Minneconican Community Rebuilders Youth Cohort, where I gained many cultural learning experiences. And after high school, I worked as a librarian assistant at College of Nomination, where I continued to host Gear, Drop Everything and Read, Cedar. Working at the library had made me to take classes at CMN in 2022. And throughout time, I gained experiences of travel, intercultural learning, and interaction with social justice, activism, non cultural experiences, and the visual and musical arts. In my free time, I enjoy spending time with loved ones, hanging out in the woods and by water, traveling, dancing, playing music, and eating, just like everyone else. What's your best dance move? Could you please show it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Alright. I don't got a whole lot here, honestly, but uh. So this game was uh, not put here for no reason. It's not just to like warm up, but it's also just to like have a little fun. And it's a big part of our presentation, like having fun. And you're gonna find out, I guess, where that ball comes into the presentation. So, what do we do as cultural professional development interns here? All right, so we research, interact, and collaborate with local and international groups, colleges, and communities who encourage and share ancestral knowledge. This helps us strengthen those communities and strengthen our community as well. Why do we do that? So society is kind of coming back in touch with uh, what ancestral knowledge has to offer to all of us. And it kind of helps us realize that we can create places and connections that encourage ancestral knowledge. But you might be wondering, what is ancestral knowledge? So we're specifically choosing to use the term ancestral knowledge instead of indigenous knowledge because we feel that everybody's ancestors are indigenous to somewhere. I am Menominee, Oneida, and Stockbridge, but I'm also Bohemian, French, and German. So at some point, my German and my Bohemian ancestors were indigenous to somewhere. So by connecting them with indigenous knowledge, we're also reconnecting them with the knowledge of their ancestors. So how are we doing this? How are we sharing ancestral knowledge? Well, some of the ways that we're doing this are kind of just some activities that we did over the summer. And you know, getting to know people, making those connections, and a little bit of research, too. So on the right side, you will see a picture of some corn that was grown by our agriculture interns at SDI. I had helped prepare the corn for our community elder dolly pots for two different workshops, and on the left side, you'll see me gathering some milkweed, which was also used in a milkweed soup workshop. So, some other things we did this summer included um, we went on a canoe journey with the protectors of the Nami River to visit the mouths of the river. That's where one of our origin stories began. And um, we kind of did this to, you know, have some time with our relatives on the river and feel a connection with the river and have a better understanding of what we're doing by learning teachings from our relatives. The canoe journey was 48 miles over the course of four days. It was done in protest of the Back 40 Mine. For those of you who do not, who do not know, the Back 40 Mine is a mine that a company is planning on putting near the Minami River, and it has a potential of leaking pollutants into the river, damaging a place that's important to our culture, but also a place that's important to the local ecosystem and the people who live on the river now. Oh wait, the beach ball! What's that doing there? And why is there a ukulele on people sitting in a circle? Well, um, so we came up with the ball idea because uh, we realized, you know, we, our internships involve connecting with others, and that includes people within our workspace. So we wanted to have some fun, some time to relax, and some time to get to know each other. And we thought the beach ball was a really good idea to do that, as well as a few other things up here, Jim, I will mention. Beach ball was our first activity. It was an idea I came up with because of uh, my internship last summer, actually. And the ukulele was something that we had used for a storytelling warm-up. And the picture of everybody sitting in the circle was a mindless sort of relaxation thing that we did, led by Satan. So I'm going to look at a little bit of what I do internationally. Um, so here you'll see in the center picture, this is a um, indigenous college in Bolivia, and they're called Tupac Katari. They focus on like the traditions and the ways of the Aymara people, and um, I'm just researching them for a possible future connection with SDI. Um, another thing I've been doing is uh, 
researching and talking with Sabine Shieldin. She's a part of another group. It's called InfoE, which stands for... I just have to find it. Institute for Ecology and Action Anthropology. Another mouthful mouth word, but it says a lot in the title. Um, they're another group who promote indigenous knowledge, and they also like promote sustainable forestry. Hopefully we'll be able to connect with them with our forestry as well, and kind of develop a connection there. So we'll see to focus more so on, you know, building those international relationships and making those connections for the college. My focus is more so, you know, local. So one thing that I had planned on doing was putting on a brochure for anybody in the community and specifically for anybody at CMN to hopefully read. This would include a little bit of information on a few different subjects, which was language, agriculture, some of the things that we've been doing today, a uh, general little introduction to our tribe, and also the unique relationship that we have between the Nominee County of Wisconsin and the Menominee tribe. So, our last treaty for our reservation was signed in 1856. It allowed us to have roughly 363 square miles of our former territory, and about 100 years later, there was also Menominee County Court. This was formed with the same boundaries as the reservation done because we were about to be terminated at status of the federally recognized tribe. So when termination occurred in 1961, we lost our reservation, but we did get to keep our boundaries of it because of the county. And when our federal recognized status was restored in 1973, we got the reservation back and we kept the county. This actually makes a extremely unique relationship where the county does take care of some things and the uh, reservation also takes care of other responsibilities. Following our work that we've been doing, uh, we prepared for the arrival of our friends. Uh, you'll see in the front, there's uh, two people who are from the Ilisogamy College, which is in Ukiabik, Alaska. In the back is a person from Sami University in Norway. In the front, you'll see on the right, that's Hal. He's the dean of the Lee Sockley College. The left is a student from there as well. In the back um, would be John Marcus, who is the head of the Department of Sami Teacher Education. And so they joined us. On the first full day with our friends, we had breakfast in the neighboring town. And we went and checked out the Menominee Cultural Museum. We also went to the intertribal or we went down into the Woodland Bowl for the intertribal dance of the power. Um, another thing that I kind of experienced there that I thought was cool to learn, uh, John Marcus, who's a Sami person who came from Norway, he was talking to me and he was telling me how different celebrating is there compared to here. So they have typically smaller celebrations, but for some reason, with like celebrations like a wedding, they have pretty much the whole community, which is 1,000 to 2,000 people. And I thought that was pretty crazy and really interesting. Just imagine being the one guy who's not invited, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, the Ipsy involved like, um, sort of us having like, some time to play with the ball. Uh, and she wants to explain a few more about that. So IPSI is the Indigenous Planning Summer Institute, and it's put on by SDI every year in the summertime, obviously. So it's just kind of time for us to get to know each other a little bit better and also you know, attend some traditional sort of workshops from people in the community. We get to know people from other places better too. Yeah, this was on the next day of Ipsy. We went on a forest tour, uh, Nami Forest. Um, Jeff Reno, who's standing in the back with his son holding us a sign, he's giving us a tour of the place and he's telling us sort of how the environment of our Nami Forest came to be. And on our final full day of Ipsy, we had closed up with a few different workshops.
setups out at a retreat that CMN now has. So there was a lacrosse workshop where we worked with our director, Tom Cano. You could see, you know, he's on play lacrosse. And also a mindfulness workshop. And once we got back later on, there was a traditional tea making workshop put on by Bonnie McCurin, who is in this room with us. Bringing the MC to the close and going through all his activities and learning about each other, we um, President Caldwell, who's sitting over there, and uh, some SDI people brought some gifts for our friends, the Ukiyami friends, and some friends visit. So here's a picture of them on the last day. So what did we learn from our internships, Chairman? Well, we were relatively new to our internships, and our internships were relatively new. So, we kind of looked at the format of our internships, and we just kind of opened ourselves up to the experiences that were happening around us. We took those experiences, and we applied them to our work. So, in a way, we made our internships an experience of our own. With that in mind, we made new relationships with others, developing cultural connections, and we found friendships. So that's the result of our experience this summer. Yep. Well, thanks for listening. We'd like to make a few acknowledgements as well. One, SDI, USDA, NIFA. And special thanks to Minami Indian, Minami Indian Tribe of Wisconsin, Rebecca Dudler, Nicholas Schweitzer for taking the pictures. Uh, Don Gover, protectors of the Minami River, the Lee College, and Sami University of Norway. Annette. Alright, with that, uh, we're Wan and Money Wheel. Thank you everyone.